Hey guys, what's up? Brighter Kick here, back with episode 4 of Let's Build a Deck. This week we're going to be looking at Yori Yagami, and as you can see, we have a new map for me to do my uh, UFS demos on, which is my personalized Jury Han mat. Uh, I actually got that at Gen Con for one year. But on to the deck. Today we're looking at, Kyo, uh, at Iori Yagami. Iori is much like Kyo in many ways. First off, much like the Kyo deck I did last week, he is a Gen Con exclusive promo. He also shares Iori, Kyo's hand size of 6 hand size and Kyo's health of 28. Put that there, and Iori... Ha, runs the symbols of chaos, death, and evil. He has uh, two abilities, the first which of his enhanced commit. Your opponent commits X foundations. X equals the desperation rating of this attack. That's a very good ability because it can be played on your opponent's turn or it can be played on your turn. And tapping uh, upwards to five foundations on your opponent's own turn is quite devastating. He also has Desperation Response, Yori, much like the rest of his team, of Vice Mature, which we will cover on decks down the road, his theme is Desperation, and as we uh, found out in Kyo, Desperation can only be activated while you are less than your printed health rounded down. But on to his ability. To do his ability, you must be in Desperation, and it is a response. You have to make a control check of 5 or greater, which is what that 5 plus stands for. And it says, after your opponent plays a form or a response ability on, printed on a foundation, destroy that foundation. That's pretty good. Onward, we will move onward to the attacks. And we are going to look at Iori's combinations. I actually built this as what is known as a combo deck. First of the attacks is Soul Thresher, and we run four of those. Let me put those out there for you. We run four Soul Threshers. Soul Thresher is a three difficulty three check with a plus two block mid block modifier with the, its three mid, three mid for three damage. It has the range keyword. It also has the uh, sta uh, static text. Uh, two static texts of uh, skip this syntax enhanced phase, so meaning once you play it, immediately goes to the block phase. It also says that other static effect is your next attack gets plus, gets minus two difficulty this turn. This is a very good ability because the next attack we're playing is a pretty high difficulty attack. Next we're bringing out Cataclysm Beam. Cataclysm Beam is a 6 difficulty 3 check with a plus 2 mid block. It hits for 3 high for 7. It's Desperation 5, and that's amazing with Yori because that means you can tap 5 things in their field. Um, it also has um, a Natali Enhance, but since we're running Yori, we can't do it. Again, it's 3 high for 7. That's amazing damage. Finally, in the combo attack, we have Nightbreaker. Nightbreaker is 5 difficulty for 3 damage. It has a plus 0 high block, which is very good because evil does not have the best uh, blocks in the game. Um, it's 3 high for 5 damage. It's a weapon. It has the combo of mid attack and high attack, so meaning you play Soul Thresher and then Cataclysm Beam, and then you can get the combo enhance. It has a death enhance, which can be used because he already does have death on him. This attack, if the death enhance reads, death enhance, if this attack deals damage, destroy one of your opponent's committed foundations. Good stuff because that means you can tap with the Ori from Cataclysm Beam and choose something you've tapped and blow it up. It also has the combo enhance, which can only be fulfilled if you have a mid attack and a high attack prior to Nightbreaker. This combo enhance reads, this attack gets plus X damage. X equals the printed damage of the immediately preceding attack in your card pool. So that means you play Cataclysm Beam, Nightbreaker's coming in at 3 high for 12, if not more. But we'll get to that more part later on. Next, we look at Flash Lightnings. We run three Flash Lightnings. Uh, flash Lightning is a 1 difficulty 3 check with a plus 0 low block, which again in this game is fantastic. It's 0 speed mid for 3 damage. It's ranged and reversal, meaning you can play it as a reversal. Um, 
While it has the static effect of while this card is in your card pool, mid and high attacks get minus one difficulty. So if you don't get a Soul Thresher, but you do get a Flash Lightning, you can play this as the first mid attack. And then Soul uh, Cataclysm Beam will be a five difficulty, and Nightbreaker will only be a four difficulty attack. It also has an enhance of, if this attack is blocked, add it to your momentum. So you can actually clear it from your card pool as well. It's an amazing card. Finally, for attacks, we have three Curse of Corruption. Curse of Corruption is what is known as an attack of power. Uh, it can only be uh, acquired at an attack of power events run at your local uh, UFS game stores. Uh, I'll have to take one. I apologize. Uh, it has uh, it is five difficulty one check. It has a plus two low block modifier. It hits at three low for seven. It has breaker three and has a combo of attack, which is very easy to fulfill. Uh, it has combo enhance. If you have ten or fewer cards in your deck, this attack gets plus five damage and is unblockable. It's a very good combo. However, it's a bit hard to do because um, you generally want to finish. Uh, around mid game with Iori. Iori, unlike Kyo, can go into late game. Um, but at 10 cards or less, you're really running into gambit there. It, its primary use of what's in this deck is its response. And it says, response, discard this card from your hand. After a player makes a control check to play an attack card, give this, uh, check either plus two or minus two, your choice. If that control check fails, this, uh, fails, this combat phase doesn't end. So that means you can pump your own control checks by uh, adding this card, checking this card, or you can hack your opponent's control checks on their turn. And that's actually what you want to do. Yori is predominantly a control check hacking deck. So we will move on from Curse of Corruption and the attacks. We run 18 attacks. That's about generally what I use anyways. And we will go into actions. We only run four actions in the deck. We run four revokes. Revoke is a zero difficulty five check. It has no block modifier. It has response after your opponent plays an enhance ability, cancel its effects, and remove this card from the game. It's just straight out negation. You can't get any better than that, and even better, it removes itself after it's been used. It also has a form ability of first form, meaning this is the first thing you have to do as soon as your turn starts after you've drawn your cards and ready your staging area. Your foundations get minus one difficulty for the rest of the combat phase. During your end phase, add this card from your staging area face down as a foundation with a blank text box. So that allows uh, building acceleration. Generally, though, I use it for the responsibility. And we'll move on to the f uh, foundations. First, we're going to look at the zeros. We have, first off, instability. Instability is a zero difficulty six check, which is already an amazing card. It has no block modifier, but that's OK. It has response to destroy this foundation after your opponent plays an ability that would decrease the damage of an attack, cancel its effects. So when your Nightbreaker is coming in at kill and they try to negate, try to reduce that damage so they don't die, you pop one of these and the effect's negated. On top of that, what makes this card so amazing is that it's playable while committed. So you can actually tap these, pop it while it's tapped, and you still get the effect. It's an amazing card. Next up, we have four Alluring Temptress. Alluring Temptress is a zero difficulty five check, which is good. It's a plus four low block, which is what I discussed earlier. This is where the blocks start to get bad and evil. It has enhanced ready one of your opponent's foundations. Your attack gets plus one damage. This is actually a really good card. A lot of people don't really get it unless they see another card called Dual Persona, which is also in this deck. The good thing about this card is you get plus one damage, which sometimes makes a difference in a game, surprisingly. And you can ready one of your opponent's foundations. You make the choice of what you get to ready. That's a good thing to do because you can ready something they don't need during the combat phase, during your combat phase that is purely an offensive uh, foundation and they can't use it. It's good overall and you'll see why later on as we get it. 
So we're moving into the one difficulty uh, foundations. Next we look at a girl like any other. A girl like any other is a one difficulty five check, which is good. It's plus three mid, which is about average uh, nowadays. It has enhanced commit. This attack gets minus three speed to a minimum of zero. Since evil does not have that great of blocks, a lot of the cards in Iori, if it does not hack or dam pump damage, it usually hacks the opponent's speed to make our block modifiers a more acceptable uh, number. It's a good card. Next we look up Know Your Objective. Know Your Objective is a 1 difficulty 5 check with a plus 3 high block modifier. It has Desperation Enhance, which does fit the theme with the Ori, so you'll be getting this Desperation Enhance pretty often. Um, it has Desperation Enhance Commit. Choose one foundation in your opponent's staging area with an ability that reduces damage and turn it face down. That card is considered a blank foundation. That is a permanent ability, so you can start blanking anything that has damage reduction. So. Again, we we do have instability, but instability just stops it from doing it once, up to four times. Know your objective has the ability to stop it permanently. And much like a girl like any other, it has enhanced commit. This attack gets minus two speed, so more uh, speed hacks. Followed up, we'll get into the two checks, or two difficulties, excuse me. We run two Damnations. Damnation was originally a UFS promo, but can now be purchased and found in the Natali starter. Damnation is a unique card, meaning you can only have one out in play. It's two difficulty for five. It's response commit after your opponent plays an enhance ability printed on a foundation, cancel its effects. We only run two of these because it is unique. Next we have Friends in High Places. It is two difficulty five check. It also does not have a block modifier. It has uh, enhanced commit, discard one momentum. Your chaos and evil attacks, which there are quite a few of in this deck, cannot be blocked by attack cards. So you play a cataclysm beam and uh, play the first enhance. They got to use foundations and actions and assets, cutting off a whole section of their deck out of being able to block the attack. Also, this is also used for the second enhance, or the response, excuse me, primarily. It's response commit lose two vitality, which you do want to use in the Ori. This helps get you into desperation quicker. It says, after you discard a card as part of a cost, add the discarded card back to your hand. This card is really good with Curse of Corruption, because you do have to discard Curse of Corruption for its cost to start this, to do a CC hack or a CC pump. CC stands for Control Check Hacks, by the way. I apologize for not covering that earlier. So you lose two, you get who you already close to his desperation, and you keep getting reoccurring Curse of Corruption for constant Control Check Hacking. It's an amazing card, but we only run two of these because it doesn't run a block modifier. And you really only need two of them. Next, we look at Discussing the Future. Discussing the Future is a KOF promo which can be uh, obtained by attending your local Hobby League events. I highly recommend seeing if your area is running any UFS events as they have some of the best KOF promos actually the only KOF promos released uh, prior to the KOF set itself coming out. Now, Discussing the Future does have a functional rata on it. Um, it has response commit after your opponent draws any number of cards, draw one cards during the combat phase. I know it's not printed on the card, but I believe that was a misprint on accident. These things do tend to happen. It also has uh, destroy this foundation after your opponent plays an ability that would discard one or more cards from momentum at the top two cards in your momentum. So this action, this discussing the future actually fuels the ability to use the first enhance on friends in higher places. It runs a two difficulty five check with a plus three high block. We only run two of these. Next, we have one of the key components of the deck, since again, Iori is a control check hacking deck. That's four Sky Noah archives. Much like discussing the future, Sky Noah archive can only be attained in Hobby League promos.
So again, go see if your store runs UFS. And if not, ask. We'll be more than happy to find some way to get UFS in your store. Anyways, Sky Noah Archives is 2 difficulty 5 check. It has no block modifier. We still run 4 of these because of its ability. I believe its ability is closely related, if not a reprint of the anti K. I could be wrong, but I do believe it is a similar effect. Its response commit before a control check is made, that check gets minus 1. Failing this control check will not end the combat phase. That's actually an amazing ability because it doesn't target specifically attacks. And sometimes hacking a card in the build phase makes all the difference in the world. Next up we have Liberation. Liberation is a 2 difficulty 5 check with a plus 3 mid block. It is our generic speed pump for the deck. It has enhanced commit, this attack gets plus 2 speed. It also has a void response, but since he already does not have void on him, we can't use it. We run 4 of these because we do need speed pumps in this deck. Next we have that card I was talking about earlier when we were discuss when I was discussing uh, Lauren Temptress, and that's Dual Persona. Dual Persona is a staple card in any deck that can run it, be it the Chaos build, a f Evil build, or a Water build. It is just that important. It is a 2 difficulty 5 check with a plus 3 mid block. Your attack, and it has two enhances. Your first enhance is a damage pump. Your attack gets minus one, th your attack gets minus one damage, minus one damage, excuse me. The next attack you play this turn gets plus two damage. This is only playable during your attack. So while, so you minus yourself one point of damage with dual persona, then you get it back with Alluring Temptress. It also has a second enhance of Enhanced Commit. If your opponent has played has played at least three attacks this turn, this attack gets minus two damage. If it's a fire attack, it gets minus three instead. So you have a damage buff and a damage debuff. This, once again, I cannot stress this enough, this is a staple card for any deck that can run this card. Next up we have the three difficulties. We have Best of Both Evils. We only run two of these. It's three difficulty five with a plus four mid block. Again, this is about average for evil. Evil does not have the best blocks, but this is why we run those speed hacks to make the control, to make the block modifiers a bit more acceptable. We have form commit discard a card. If the card you discarded for this ability was an attack, your next control check gets plus three. If the card you discarded was a foundation, your opponent must discard a card. Predominant, you can use it to buff your uh, control check. Honestly, the reason I'm using this is for the discard a card. Discarding a card is absolutely key in late games, which is what you're kind of stri your mid to late game, which is what you're kind of striving for with Iori. Iori can rush. But he, unlike Kyo, he tends to want to stay a longer route for around mid to late game. Rounding out the deck is Law of the Land. Law of the Land, much like Damnation, was a promo but can now be found in, Uf, in uh, UFS starters. I believe he's found in either Vincent Gray or Natali. He is a 3 difficulty 5. He has no block modifier. He has response commit before the block step, returning this attack speed to its printed speed. So if they pump for millions and millions, and in this game that is easily possible to have a high speed attack. Uh, before you go to block step, because again evil has horrible blocks, they range around three, unless you have something really good. Uh, it puts it right back to normal before the block. It also has enhanced commit, change this attack zone to mid. So if they throw, try to throw off center attacks, you can switch it back to mid. And that's good because Yori runs 22 mid blocks. So it gets it out, makes it easier for you to block. That's Yori in a nutshell. Again, this is a mid to late game deck. It has plenty of ways of screwing your opponent over with control check hacks. 
I also want to give a brief shout out to uh, Ice Fox on the UFS forums. He's actually been looking forward to this deck video, and he's building. Uh, been asking me for deck help, so I recommend that he watches this video. That he watches this video when we put it out. So I just wanted to say, hey man, I hope this video helps you out. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys in two weeks when we ask one of the most asked questions in the fighting game community. Are you okay? See you then. Hey guys, Ryder Kick here. Just wanted to say thank you for watching. Please leave all comments and criticisms in the comment section below. Your feedback helps me make this little show better. Also, please remember to go to my blog, totaljusticegaming.blogspot.com, and also hit the Facebook page. Uh, like it and let me know that what you guys think. Uh, also, the Facebook page is a place to go where uh, you guys can keep an update with the website. Website's going to be updated as much as I possibly can, about once a week. So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next Total Justice Gaming Let's Build a Deck.